Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. I cried from this platform as I was teaching on sanctification, which is a core doctrine area in New Testament Christianity. I was led by the Lord to begin to build our foundations of faith again. And I started from the Old Testament to show us how that God was holy. And in order for us to work with God, we will have to be holy. It is impossible to do business with a God that is holy if you are not like him. And I, I did a very detailed study of how the children of Israel, they were going to partner with God, but it was impossible to partner with God because of the nature of God's holiness. And the entire book of Leviticus was written to see the sacrifices and the things that were required in order to make sinful man to walk with a holy God. That's the reason for which the entire book of Leviticus was written. In order to reveal the basis of our sanctification, if we were going to interact and to have business with a God that is holy. I also showed that anywhere God was, was considered holy. That if you are going to operate in intimacy with God, you'll be confronted by his bold nature of holiness. And that should make you adjust. If you, in, in case you want to do business with the God that is between the cherubims. In fact, those days, when the high priest is going into the Holy of Holies to transact with God, there is a rope that is used to tie his waist, just in case he stands before God, and God doesn't find him in the context of holiness. God will kill him. So when God kills him, nobody can go into the Holy of Holies. They will use that rope to draw him out of the presence of God and go and bury him. It means that the priest doesn't even know if the status of his right standing until he stands before Jehovah. So in the New Testament, to avoid slaughter, what was done in the New Testament is that the blood of Jesus becomes the token. It is, the blood is already dead. That means we are dead. We are already dead. Eh? Death is already smelling. And then it's under the death of Jesus that he has accepted that we can now come boldly. The God in the New Testament has not changed from the old one. But you see, the philosophy of the New Testament is that you come to God and begin to deal with God. The moment you begin to see the way he is, that he is holy, all right, you, through repentance, will begin to adjust, to accommodate the fact that he doesn't change. This is how he is. So, and the blood of Jesus is available to take care of our errors when we see him and we discover that we are not like him. That blood is available to make us right with him so that we can keep joining with him. The, the idea is that as we keep joining with him, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing until we sustain the very image of Christ where we become reflective of God in everything that we do 24 hours in a day. I cried from here. That don't claim you are a minister of the gospel when you are dwelling perpetually in iniquity. Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? What, we are not the same. If you can dwell perpetually in iniquity, it means you have not met the God of redemption. Because if I, if I make a mistake, the Holy Ghost will, I will know he, is, he has left. And he will show me his displeasure, 100%. He cannot cope up, he cannot keep up with this kind of character. He's so sensitive. You will never know him until you come close. In my work with God, sometimes I'm preaching here and I tell you something that God has not sanctioned me to tell you. He will leave me from, on this pulpit. And that has happened like nine times. While you are telling me that, oh, our pastor is a great teacher, I go home to cry because I know he left me. You will see how sensitive God is. So if a preacher, a so-called preacher, can dwell in immorality, eh? <laughs> It means he has not met this God that I preach. It is going to be a gross misrepresentation of God for me to claim that I'm in fellowship with that man under the guise of ecumenism. Because if I do that, what will happen is that what God wants to do with me will be compromised. Because the principle of separation is critical to maintaining the purity and the jealousy of that which God wanted to do. The Nigerian church was a golden church of Africa. The revival that sprang forth from our borders was unequaled in the stories of revival that we hear. You've heard about Azusa? It's just that what happened on our soil was not documented. 
And that's our, our limitation. It wasn't doc documented. We, we've, 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 I've read about many mighty men that rose in the nations of the world. There's no story that I've read about that comes anywhere near what happened through that man, Apostle Joseph Babalola. Near! No story. But you see, it wasn't documented. So we believe it, it never happened. A man that during praise and worship, as they are singing praise and like we just did, he, he levitates. When you see that Western Nigeria received the gospel, most of us don't know what it means. It was when, when I was to marry my wife, they were based in Ileife. So I used to go to Ileife to see the family and stuff like that until we got married. And when we now got married, I, I was working in Lagos, so I was going to visit my in-laws once and again. That was when I discovered what was in that city. Now, these people have advanced in their knowledge of divination to a level, a level of accuracy. The lens of divination has been adjusted to accommodate accuracy. What the Ifa priest prophesies comes to pass. In fact, most of our tribes are settled where they are settled today because of divination. And there was no stronger tribe in Nigeria today in divination than our brothers from the West. But there was a revival that overcame that foundation. And whether you like it or not, there is a prophetic spirit that is hanging over people from Western Nigeria. It's not, it's not natural. It came through the witness of a man. During prison, he doesn't want to raise the dead, he's just worshiping God, and he sees that angels will lift him up. Are you there? So I have a chronicle in my library, a very fat chronicle. Somebody took time to put the details of that man's life together and they sent me a copy. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know who sent it, but it's in my life. None of the things you read in God's generals comes close to what God did through that man. Are you talking about people that were raised from the dead? That was, that's lunch, that's, that's lunch box issues. Are you talking about healing, sicknesses? In fact, the man operated in healing to a point that he became tired of praying for the sick. And he went and prayed over a little stream that was in his neighborhood. And people were going into the stream for healing. And how many years, 20-something years after he died, a madman still entered that stream and came back healed. The, 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 the will of God, the dimensions of the expectations of God concerning the potential of the church in this nation was, was eclipsed by darkness. And what we have today in its best is a state of compromise. And this state of compromise was occasioned by the violation of several principles that are critical to maintaining the civilizations that come from God. So Moses was considered as the shepherd of the church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness journeyed from the land of captivity into the land of promise. The church in the wilderness stopped 42 times in the journey. And by the time you go to the book of Matthew, you are going to see in the book of Matthew when the generations of, of ancestors leading to Christ was captured in the book of Matthew, you are going to see that it was 42 generations, which is consistent with the 42 stations that Israel stopped when they were transiting from the house of bondage into the house of promise. So if we study the church in the wilderness accurately, you will see a prophetic journey of the church of Jesus in every age. In fact, you can even trace and track where the American church is in that, in that journey. You can trace and track where the Ghanaian church is on that journey. So what I want to do now is to show you that even in the church in, in the wilderness, Satan had already pioneered this principle of removing separation from the advancement. So that anything that God gets at the end of the day will be a compromised position. And the glory of God in its entirety and fullness will not be able to rest on that civilization because it doesn't look like the arrangement that is established in the heavens. Meanwhile, the idea of God is that I will be done on earth the same way it is done in heaven. Exodus chapter 12, verse 33. Then you will see what Satan did. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. 
and the people took their dough before it was leavened, and they are needing troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Is that it? And, you see that? and a mixed multitude went also up with them and flocks and heads and very much cattle. <laughs> the guys were moving. <laughs> what Satan did was that he smuggled. Oh my God, you are not following me. You are not here. I've not started striking the matters. They are matters. There are obvious matters in the landscape of the church of our day that I want to open your eyes to, but we need to start with scripture so that you will not say it's an invention of my own strategy, an invention of my own thinking. I, I had what I wanted to say before I came and tried to look for scriptures to align with. The Bible is not capable of private interpretation. It's a book of one author and many writers. And that's why the principle of witness must be satisfied in bringing out the position of truth. Are you there? A mixed multitude. Satan now arranged a mixed multitude. This mixed multitude, they have a different God. They have different ways. They have different approaches to life. They have different philosophies. This mixed multitude joined themselves to the people that God was delivering to set up a nation that was a nation under God so that God's authority in its fullest extent will be found and factored among the people and God will be able to manifest the same civilization that is in heaven upon the face of the earth. In order to forestall this, why no one was watching? A mixed multitude also say we are delivered. <laughs> and they follow them. You know, this verse is quiet in the book of Genesis, in the book of Exodus. It's quiet, it's a mixed multitude. And then just, you think, okay, that's all. Wait. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. The devil will always attack the principle of separation. And if he succeeds in doing this, he has compromise our civilization. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and Moses prayed unto the Lord, and the fire was quenched. Can you see God fighting against his people? And he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost them. So it is the loss of the mixed multitude. They will share it among the congregation. When you hear them agitating, say, hey, who, 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 the engineer of that campaign is a little, is a little fraction of the population is the mixed multitude. They have a different God. They have different principles. They were not children of Israel. They did not know the God of Israel. They did not subscribe to the God of Israel. What made the God of Israel to fight against his people and to release fire on his own people was because of the lust of the mixed multitude. So if Satan wants to downgrade the quality of Christianity, what he does is that he gets people from his camp to become pastors. And then he makes sure that these pastors have a loud voice. And guess what? These guys will be pushing for the golden plan. And the golden plan is ecumenism. In ecumenism, let us come together. You are different, I'm different. We have a different God. You, you have a different God. You worship something else. I, but for, for political correctness, let us just be together. So the golden plan of Satan, of the spirit of the Antichrist, is to push for ecumenism. And in ecumenism, we are heterogeneous. In ecumenism, we are not of the same sort. We don't worship the same God. We don't subscribe to the same principles. We are not operating from the same source. We don't have the same values. But so that we, we, it will look as if we are one. Let us unite. Somebody is an easy mo. He has an altar. He dance, dances to the spirit naked in the night. Oh, 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 But ecumenism, we recommend. That it is in our interest to be one. 
But if we try to subscribe to ecumenism, you will discover that what will drive our civilization will be the loss of the mixed multitude. Under such circumstances, the mixed multitude will become powerful, more powerful than the original lot. And because of that, we'll provide concessions to accommodate the mixed multitude in such a way that there will be no crisis. And in that compromise, what we have done is that we have violated the principles of separation. And the product is going to be corruption and what? And violence. You know, when you begin to keep your conviction, keep your commitment to God, and people, other believers will say, ah, the way you are praying, is this? Did you sin? What is it? When you hear that, it is an attempt to diminish your brightness. The real church is about to rise up. Let me tell you, there's going to be a massive separation. The gap between the false light and the true light that has been dwelling side by side, the gap will start becoming wider. The reason is because of the presence of true apostolic people that can bear witness of the reality of the living God. The other day, somebody sent a, a, a text. I said, we will kill you, we will kill you. You know what? Don't send a text. If you see me, kill me. You're sending texts for weak people. If it is given unto you to do it, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. You don't know the fire that, that the God I serve carries. You will need more than a threat to, to stop us. I have seen death, death, death turn backward. Which is invoked death to take me. And he actually came. I saw death turn backward. My end will not come by blight. It will not come by a bomb. It will only be because the God of heaven says, it's time to come. When you see us, kill us. Don't send text messages. That's for weak people. We died long time ago. You can't threaten me with death. The true church is about to emerge. And the great divide will be wider. It, it, you will know the sorcerers in a short while because of the breezing black brightness of the light of God that will come from his true witnesses. Oh my God. What is the name of your God? Some people went somewhere for healing and they had to take water and drink the water and then there's one, one altar there, they will bow down before it, bow down, you, you will not wear shoes. What, what did you just do? Bowing down before not an image? Ah. The devil has done over time on your case. Receive grace to stand in your conviction, even if it's not popular. Amen. When you find a preacher whose message does not divide, you know, if I begin to preach about Jesus, Anyone serving Satan will know that I've exposed him. Are you following? If your message does not divide, it, it's pampas Satanists, in pampas Christians, pampas thieves, pampas fornicators. You say, you know, this balanced teaching, we're in the middle, you know, so that everybody will, you, you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a man pleaser. I hope you have seen it in the Bible that if I'm a man pleaser, I cannot be in the service of God. God will make you different. He will not make you popular, he will make you different. What it means to be holy is that you are different. Wait, listen, listen, listen. If we go to the market and we buy 10 cups and we take five cups to the temple, the same cups, we say, these ones, we have brought them for God. Then we now take five, the rest of the five, take them home. If the priest comes and anoints those cups, from the day the anointing came on the cups, the cups can no longer be used for any human thing. It's only good for use in the service of God. So these cups are called holy cups. The same cups, the ones you use to give people water, give your baby water, you used to pour water into the, the, the radiator of your car. Those cups that have been dedicated to God cannot be used for mundane purposes. Those ones now only have use in the service of God. So those cups, even though they look alike, they are different. Holiness will make you different. The way normal common people that fornicate in the market are, you will be different. The way normal people do business, that's not how you will do business. You will be different. The way normal everyday pastors do ministry, that's not how you will be. You will be different. If it is not evident that you are different, what you have 
sold for. What you have bought is called ecumenism. You want to be in the center so that politically you look right, you look correct. You look like the one that is trying to bring everybody together. But what you are doing is idolatry. When God descends in the land, it is such as you that he will destroy first. That compromise, when God comes, he will destroy you first. Because you are the very image of, of compromise. Forgive me, I'm not called to preach to you babes. I bear a rod from God. This is the same message I preach to kings. It doesn't change. If you catch me away, I have transport to go back home. So when I go, I... <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. Acts chapter 8 from verse 14. Now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid there their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, now, please follow what Peter said. Number one, thy money perish with thee. Why? Because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. There's a preacher on the pulpit, he boasted that he took a certain amount to a certain preacher and received his anointing. <laughs> and people were saying, hallelujah, amen. Jesus. That was what earned this money cost. Thy money perish with thee. Because what? Thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Number two, go on. Can you see the second statement? He said, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. It means you are not born again. You cannot mingle among us. You have no part. And it is the Spirit of God that drew that war. You can't mix because we are separated. We cannot talk about unity until we talk about the issue of separation. If you are separated unto God and I'm separated unto God, you, we don't need to preach unity. We will blend because our values are one. Our pursuits are one. Our desires are one. The reason why we've been trying to do, you, you know, how many of you were part of student union when you were on campus? Union is not unity. The moment the object of our separation is one, then uni unity is possible. Unity is possible. Unity is possible. There's a certain place that I don't, I decided, not God, me, I decided that I will not preach here because of several things that happened. So a preacher came and invited me from there. In my heart, it was already known. But I said I should ask God. And God approved. And I was wondering why God did not honor my, my desire not to preach. Until I now went for the invitation. And I saw that we had the same God. And that he had gone to our God and asked him, bring that man. Even though I did not want to go, I found myself there. And I found a brother. A brother basking in the fires of God. Are you there? So it was no longer about my own human persuasion. My position was overruled because he was in touch with the God of our fathers. You don't, you don't need to preach unity. If we are separated unto the same God, we will find alignments. When you begin to hear, people say, you know, believers, we don't love ourselves. This, <laughs> calm down. Don't, go, if, go and look for your glasses and put it on and watch him. He's trying to push for ecumenism because he's standing on foreign ground. Standing on strange ground. The man says, well, you have no part in this matter. There is no portion of our allotment that falls to you. You are a stranger to this economy. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This is the first time I've seen a man that was able to detect a man's heart. 
Because in the Old Testament, it was, it said, men look on the heart, word, but God looks on the This man picked his heart. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You are not yet born again, but you'll be masquerading. And evangelist Philip had baptized this man. He had baptized him. The man was already gone in to become assistant pastor in the move. Because Satan wanted to orchestrate an occasion of a mixed multitude in that revival. And then the apostles came. You have no part in this matter. Is there someone that is making you comfortable with compromise? Is there someone that is making you no longer care about your life of fornication? Is there someone that is making you feel that, okay, you know, I was at the airport, which day was that? Was when were, were we at the airport? So somebody confronted me with scriptures. And he said, are we really Christians or we are saints? I knew where he was going. Because in falling Christianity, what we present to the people is the structure, the internal structure. How that it is possible for you to be born again and it's a reality that your heart bears witness to and there's no evidence outside. Meanwhile, your spirit became recreated and the evidence to prove that your spirit is regenerated is that they are fruit of the regenerated human spirit which are evident to see. Huh? When you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost was that you spoke in tongues. There was something external. And the ultimate evidence is that you have the capacity to walk with the Holy Ghost, be led by the Holy Ghost and become a creature that manifests everything that is in the will of God. Are you there? There was nothing that God did that there was no external dimension to it. So if you say, if you say that the, the unbelievers were the guys that called us Christians, so we are not Christians. What we are are saints, because that's the position that we attain by new birth. It means that you are accepting that a coin has only one side. You are accepting that you can clap with one hand. Because those things you ask are two sides of the same coin. It's the front and the back end. If I'm born again, there should be a manifestation. Yes, sir. If I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, there should be what? A manifestation. And if you study your Bible, you find out that one of the qualifications for eldership is that an elder should have a good report even among all believers. And it's the unbelievers that gave us the name Christian. And what it means in Greek is little Christ. They were manifesting Christ. They were from different languages, different tribes, but there was one thing that was a common denominator among them the life of Christ was revealed through the vessel. It was an observation testimony. By the time we finished the theology, there, were, there was no question. Because there's a campaign to begin. Half truth is not truth, it's deception. It's holding the truth in unrighteousness. Can we pray? Can we pray that God will help us keep our conviction, even though it may not be popular? Your conviction may not be popular. But it's in keeping with the civilization of the heavenlies for you to be homogeneous. I serve God and I serve God only. Oh. We cast up, we were, we were doing deliverance somewhere in northern Nigeria and we found this witch very equipped with demonic power and she was caught up by the Holy Ghost and came down and the power of darkness broke from her. But there was a power she desired to retain which is a power to look at you if she's angry and afflict you. So even though the deliverance took place, she was brought into church. She liked being in the choir. She was already in the choir, but she retained that power. So that if anybody tries her, it will use, as long as she held on to the power, she was not of Jesus. As long, she didn't let go that power, even though she was integrated into church life, she was a stranger. God came again, this time to kill. That was when she let go the power on the eyes and became altogether of Jesus. I met her some years ago and she didn't have that power. She was a follower, ardent follower of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, can we stop the mixtures? Can we stop the mixtures? God wants one pure breed. When Jesus looked, he saw one of his disciples coming. He said, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile of one sort, of one kind, of one fashion, of one principle, of one source. For there is one God and one faith, one baptism, even one Lord Jesus Christ. It's one, 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 one. Because he wants one, he wants one, he wants one. Can we ask God, oh my 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 God. Oh my God.
that the Lord will give us the grace to be irritated by anything that is not of the Holy Ghost. The wall must be put in place in order for us to preserve the civilization that comes from heaven. I will walk the path of righteousness. I will travel on the streets of holiness. My generation might call me a Jew, a man that is laid back, but the fire so the glory of God will burn upon my spirit. Oh, arise, arise, shine, because your light is come. We will not sell out. We will not be compromised. God wants a pure breed, a new generation without greed, a radical opposition against unrighteousness. Kenya Subela Tomendi Isa Makondo Gato Bela Sibrete Esosela Igabaito Kobe Malias Escobre Mali Kobe Malatal Dialogo Kose Briska Mendolo Elias Sige Braska Tonde Bayi Ayato Bokolante Eskilo I will not sell out I will keep my garment wide my head shall not lack ointment. I serve the Lord Jesus. Cast away that weight. Cast off that sin. Come into the light. Sebri ala baboko satari. Abra kasketo bonde la niske. Hebre babo no kosia. Abris kafe la monde. La kala bonta mir. La kala basalaya. in the name of Jesus so when you find a man gaining mileage and the hand of God is intense upon him what he did was that he subjected himself for purging yeah he subjected himself to the protocol of purging hey hey will you allow him purging that your anger cannot travel with him your wickedness cannot travel with him. The pornography that you are beginning to like in the night cannot travel with him. And you will decide that you need to be purged. It is when you decide to be purged, ah, you are considered for more noble kingdom tasks. You can decide to be silver. You can decide to be gold. You can decide to be wood. You can decide to be stubble. And you must, you must understand that when the test that will, that will determine your worth is the test of fire. So if you put stubble in fire, what will happen to it? You put wood in fire, what will happen to it? But you put gold in fire, it purifies it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can we invite Jehovah make a disco? The one that sits in the seat of refiner and purify our silver. Take away the dross. Take away the alloy. Take away the mixture. 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 I submit for potting, for potting, for potting, for potting, for potting. For potting, for potting, for potting. I am not of this world. Thank you for watching. 
do well to subscribe like share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what god is doing from this platform you can also follow us on all our social media platforms we are on instagram we are on facebook and we are on twitter thank you